Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, as you can see, right in front of you there, we've got rid of my little native Welsh Marine Aquarium. Now, I've taken everything back down to the beach. We let everything go. Aunt Blenny's gone back to the wild so to, she can enjoy herself, find herself a boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. You guys that are familiar with my channel and regularly watch it will know who I'm talking about. And if you don't, pop back into my playlists and check out that aquarium and how we got that one up and running and you can see how I made that one we're gonna do another one next year but like I said in one of my other videos we get I've been getting a tank ready for we're gonna breed some otter sinkless catfish for all you guys out there that have been wanting me to breed these guys for a long long time but it's just coming across them and down at my local um, fish shop they're actually got some nice ones in down there they're a pretty good size so what I've done is I've set this tank up now for them it's been cycling for the last three weeks like I normally do with a bit of cooked prawn. I just drop a bit of cooked prawn in there, cooked shrimp, whatever you've got. Um, just something to decay so it rots down. That creates the ammonia, starts that lovely little nitrogen cycle off. And then we can cycle the tank that way. Now it's all ready for them. We've got a lovely cycle in the tank there. I've got my bigger Wazi filter down below full of biohome media, which has been ticking over now for a while. And it's got a nice little colonization of bacteria going in it. So. That's all up to speed, ready to rock and roll. Inside the tank, I've got one lovely big piece of um, oak bogwood in there, which I got from up in my local woods. And I've tied a load of Java fern to that, which is gonna root its way in amongst it and make that, will obviously make the water conditions a lot more healthier as well. And I've just given it a water change this morning, slight bit of tannin in the water. We got 7.2 at the moment which I will tend to try and, I'll, I'll drop that as we go. Now you see there's no media in the bottom here. I wanna keep that as is because when the babies do appear, I like to see them. I like to see what's going on, see how they're feeding and, and all that sort of stuff as well. And as you can see, I've been cleaning these two panes of glass so you guys can see what's going on. But on the bottom there, you could see a beautiful algae colonization along the bottom there, which these new otter sinkers are gonna be absolutely ravenous upon and they're gonna that's growing all over the leaves that's growing all over the log as well over the last three weeks that i've been rigging this tank up and so it's all ready for them now so what i think we should do is pop down to the local fish shop i'll grab myself maybe five or six so we've got a good little idea of what we're going to get quite difficult to sex out a sinkless catfish but if i buy six i think we'll have a good chance of maybe having a male and female there at some point and we can see how they go. Females normally tend to have bigger rounder bellies and everything else, obviously, when they get full of eggs, you can see them. And being in the pet shops, they don't feed them really what they need. And they do need a lot of algae and things. They just go around with their fresh food and they just dropping it in the top, like they normally do, feeding everything in there. And they grab a bit. That's why sometimes you see a lot of them are underweight in the pet shops. But we've left all this growing here lovely now so we can get them in and hopefully get them fed up get them nice and fat we can do our little water changes and our little drop in the water levels and everything else all the little tricks of the trades that I normally do to get these guys to spawn so what I think I should do now is stop rabbiting on and we can get down to the fish shop pick out some nice ones and then come back here and acclimate them into the tank right guys we've just come out the shop I've got 12 in there believe it or not you can see them up in the top corners there and in the bottom corners pretty big ones so hopefully it'll speed up the process a little bit more if they're a little bit more mature so let's get these guys back home get them in the tank and have a look at them a very very fine and a lot of young plex and different species of fish get they die because when people have them in these tanks they've got substrate in there and it actually can clog up their gills and kill them so you've got to be careful with that that's why let's keep a bare bottom tank so i think without further ado is a little clownfish and the old evo in the back there little evo fluval evo tank there doing very well but i just thought i'd put them in here just so you could see them before we put them in into the tank now put the lid back on as you can see we've got that beautiful dusting of algae all the way along there i've left that and on the back of the walls as well all over the leaves and on the log like i just said before we left for the shop and um i think we'll put them in now we'll just suspend them I'll just put this back into the tripod. We'll suspend that there for a minute. There you go, it's a bit, a bit more still. And now what we can do is put these little guys 
Always be careful as well guys when you're getting autos because they love to go into the corners of the bags as you can see. So when you place the bag down it pinches them up in the corners like that. That goes for any catfish really. But as you can see they're super sucky and they're sucking all over the side there where they... So I'm going to cut the top off, get back to you in a sec when they're in the tanks suspended okay. We can have a little bit more of a chat about them. Right okay guys what we got here is Macrospilus which is another species of, of otto. You get the Vitartus as well. There's about 16 different species um, which do exist, um, but these are the normal the ones. They normally you normally see them as affins down in the pet shops, but they can vary. As you can see with the uh, with the Macrospilus, they've got that little diamond in the tail there on the bottom there, and that little line seems to run and gets broken just before it. That's how you can tell. With the Vitartus, the line tends to they tend to be darker all the way along the back with that narrower. Um, little band in the tail which runs into the tail okay and they've got they and with the uh, with these guys they've got the spots along the top where the where the vitatus tend to have just like a little bar that goes across uh, with no little spots in it at all but like I say there's lots of different ones we've got the uh, the macrospilus so we're gonna have a go breeding these little guys so they've been in the tank now for a while we've had the change of water we don't want the shop water going in this tank at all okay because there could be white spot tomites in there and all that kind of horrible stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out take some water out of this tank and then just give them a little swap around and get as l the minimal amount of water as I can get putting them in the tank okay this is what I tend to use my little rotter for sieve very very fine mesh and I just take that into the bag you might see, I'll just see if I can do it with you guys watching And then very very slowly lift it out with one in, hold it over the tank, let that go in the water, and there he goes. There's number one stuck on the glass. So I'm going to repeat this process now 12 times, and then we're going to get back in the tank and we can have a look and see him settling in. Right, well, okay, guys, what I've done is I've put them all in the net now, we'll release them, and you can see him swimming around. Slowly place them in the water and you'll see them come out in their own time. There we go. And they'll probably all shoot off and hide away in the log until they're settled down. Here they come one at a time, nicely acclimated. Nice little fatties. And they'll be straight down there getting onto that algae and those diatoms on the bottom in no time at all. Come on in, out you go, last one, hey, there you go, happy days. Little bit of sand gone in out the bag, but not to worry. Alright, put that sieve somewhere safe and now we can have a look at them a bit closer up in the tank. Okay, there you go, there's a nice little group there on the bottom. One little guy on his own, down here. A little bit moody because they've just gone in. Another one over in the back there, underneath the uh, the log, another one there. So we got 12 in all, which is going to be good. So we've got a good little mix up there of males and females, hopefully. We've got all those lovely Java ferns in there, which are slight decay. They'll feed off on all that. Now I picked the ones down in the shop that were in a little tank on their own. They didn't have a great deal to eat in there. So this is going to be a massive um, nutritional boost for them, okay? So uh, they're going to feast up on all that lovely algae and all the diatoms as you can see on the base and put on some weight and then hopefully we'll have some breeding action very very shortly yeah like I was saying earlier guys these these little fish are very susceptible to ammonia and things in the water so make sure that you've got a really good like cycle tank before you put them in don't go just getting a new tank sorted out straight away within a couple of days add in some of these little bacteria things without any algae in the water okay because they will starve some of them are well a lot of these are wild caught so they won't really take to the algae wafers so quick um, and they can die quite quickly so make sure you've got a nice supply of algae like we've got all over the wood here the plants and the base of the tank as well okay so you, they can have a really good feed because once they start running out of food that's when they can start becoming problematic in your tank as well because believe it or not their little raspy mouth will pull plants away uh, fibers out the plants and they'll rip your plants to bits if you've got a delicate aquarium if there's not enough food in there for them okay 
They're only a very, very small fish, only get to around two or three centimeters long. And um, make sure you buy nice, health, healthy ones when you see them in the shops. Make sure they're always nice and active, feeding away, looking for food. And um, if there's any with little sunken bellies and stuff, I'd leave them. I wouldn't really go for those. I'd make sure they've got nice little plump bellies. Another thing with these little guys as well is they've actually got a little air bladder as well in them so they can sort of swim mid-water. Like with other catfish, they have got the plated scales, but they've got this little bladder in there as well, which so they can sort of semi-swim mid-water and it looks like they can swim around quite easily rather than the other big bronze corries and stuff. You can see they just swim up to the top, big bubble, and then they sink to the bottom again because their scales are so heavy. So. Um, so they have got all that as well, but they've also got that little addition and also that can be used as a primitive lung as well when times are hard and these little streams that they live in tend to drop down and they can be in very, very shallow pools for some time. So um, it can act, act as a primitive lung as well, like a, like a, um, like a Siamese fighting fish would be there as well. They've got that labyrinth lung, very similar to that. But these little guys are fantastic. Right, okay guys, I'm going to leave it there on part one, okay, that's just getting everything set up, what we needed to do to get the tank ready, obviously lovely and cycled, we've got the little guys in there now, and then we'll get back to part two, where hopefully we can go through all the conditioning stuff and everything else, and um, get on our way to breeding these little guys, so you guys can copy it along, and all the other YouTubers can copy me, and breed them as well, so there you go, hope you enjoyed the video, Love you loads, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Take care, bye for now.